All right, let's see. So Gabby, one of the things that you were really talking a lot about, particularly when you're selecting an app are some of the things that I personally just really had to reflect on as I've gotten more comfortable with technology and I've got to feel like other music therapists are in a similar um, kind of boat, so to speak, metaphorical boat. Um, I realize I talk a lot in like euphemisms and I'm trying to not do that. <laughs> Um, but one of the things that I've been thinking about when I've heard our colleagues ask, you know, what app do you use for songwriting? What app do you use for piano and things like that? And I think one of the things um, that I've been thinking about is uh, challenging other music therapists to not think about apps necessarily in this sort of one dimensional aspect, meaning, you know, that they're only using one app with one client or one app just for, again, like songwriting. And so one of the things for me is that that could be clinically indicated, right? And if it is, then that's great. But I also think it's really important, as you were talking about with really getting to know an app a little bit more thoroughly, that then kind of results in understanding some of those nuances of apps um, particularly how would we use that in a clinical setting to really maximize the app's effectiveness. And this is kind of tied back in similar to our discussion about thinking of the apps like an instrument. So it's one thing to know D, G, and A on your guitar, and that's a good place to start, right? But there's so much more that you can do with a guitar. And so it's the same thing with the apps um, too. And, you know, as we were talking about with all of these apps that have so many different similar features or functions, one of the things I found in trying to figure out what app do you use is just figuring out, well, which one do I use? So if I wanted to download an app that was about sign language, well, like there's 15 or more of them, um, a lot of that are free, and they're definitely not the same because I actually have done that. <laughs> they are not the same. And so you know, so sometimes for me, it's like, oh, great. Well, this is good. Now I found like one app that I can use an hour later mm -hmm. <laughs> um, of kind of weeding out these apps. So one of the things that I've always been really interested in is really creating a pretty robust database because um, I am an Excel nerd. So I will fully admit this. Um, love Excel. And so I love being able to just use the sort functions, uh, the filter functions so that you can find apps based on you know, the um, cost for one, um, but other things that we were talking about um, that really relate to the clinical um, application, you know, things that you were talking about with accessibility. Um, but also for me, I'm always concerned about ethics and ethical considerations. Mm -hmm. So um, who are the developers of the app? Is there anything about this app that could be shared? Um, how do you protect information, particularly if you're going to record a client song? So like basically anything where you could record a client song, how are you securing that? Does the app even allow for that? Those sorts of things that we may not necessarily think about before we bring it into the session, but that are really important as part of that clinical judgment. Um, you know, just other things like just the advantages, the disadvantages of it. Are there any contraindications about why you might not want to use this app? So I've had some apps. So for example, like I've used an app um, that has nature sounds on it with mm -hmm. my clients before, but I've also worked with clients who've experienced trauma. And so I know that there are certain sounds, um, like maybe even the ocean or rain sounds actually might be traumatic or trigger um, a traumatic um, response. And so just even things like that to consider um, when you're picking an app. Um, and as you were talking about too, Gabby, just how much time do you need to take to familiarize yourself with an app? And honestly, I mean, that's, that's really a valid point because, you know, as music therapists, we're so busy. So if yeah. I can pick between two apps and this app, yeah, it may not have as many functions as this app, but I can spend less time. This will still help me meet my client's goals. It still is appropriate, right? You know, mm -hmm. like those kinds of decisions. So those are some of the things that I've just been thinking a lot about that I feel like um, is one area overall that our field, um, I'd love to see us focus a little bit more on. Mm -hmm. 